So many of us, if not all of us at one time or another, ask the question, where is God in all of this? You know, I, I have asked it once, twice, three times, many times throughout my life when things are really hard. And I think it's very natural that we all ask that question, where is God every now and then? And so most of my pastoral conversations are, are, quite frankly, conversations about where God is in all of this mess. And so that's what I'd like to talk with you about today. Because you see, when people are faced with difficult challenges before them, and I mean real challenges, then they say, they say, where is God in all this? How could God make this happen or allow this to happen? You know, a lot of people, believers and non-believers, demand where is God right now when the West Coast is on fire, when winds and surges come and just flood towns in the Gulf Coast or Florida, where where rivers uh, rise to historic levels and uh, wipe out homes and businesses. You know, where is God when one million people worldwide die of COVID-19? Where is God when 36 million people worldwide have come down with the dreaded disease? Where is God when black men are shot, unarmed black men are shot or killed by law officers who take a sworn oath to protect those in their community? Where is God? Where is justice? And here's another one. What about the 20.6 million people who are currently out of work. Where is God in all of these tragedies? You know, many people insist that God allows these, these horrible things to happen. And they have absolutely no interest in worshiping or believing in this God that's quite frankly sadistic. So the answer, where is God? can be found in scripture. God's promise was never that life was going to um, be easy. That um, the promise that we find in scripture is that when it's our turn to face those challenges and confront the unfairness in our lives, no matter how hard it is, is that you'll be able to handle it. I'll, we'll be able to handle it. And we will be able to handle it because scripture tells us that God is with us in all things. This higher power, whatever it is that you want to name, gives us strength when we need to find our way through the darkness. That's what scripture tells us. And if you haven't noticed, in my prayers, when I pray for others, um, I always pray a similar thing. I always pray for whoever the person is facing a, a difficult challenge before them, whether it's an illness or, or you know, whatever it is. Um, I always pray that that, that person feels and that person experiences God's presence and that they know that no matter what circumstance they are facing, that they are never, ever alone. And even though sometimes we do feel abandoned, just because we feel abandoned doesn't mean that we are. God is always with us. So um, there is a, a, fa a, fa a 
A favorite author of mine, um, Rabbi Harold Kushner, you might know him with his work. Uh, he wrote a book called um, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. And what he points out is in the verse, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. He makes the point, Rabbi Kushner makes the point that the psalmist is not saying, I will fear no evil because only, evil only happens to people who deserve it. That's not what this verse says. The author of this psalm is saying that the world can be scary. It can be out of control. But what, however you feel the world is, it doesn't scare me, is what the author of Psalm 23 is trying to get across. No matter how frightening, no matter how terrible the things that we face, the psalmist says, it doesn't scare me. And the reason why the psalmist is not afraid when the world is crumbling down around them is because the psalmist does not believe that God is some kind of you know, producer, that he is um, creating some kind of play and that we're all puppets in it. And God is creating this script where, where um, people, COVID comes and wipes out, you know, millions of people or, um, you know, people just lose all their, their security, their financial security. This is not what God does. These are not things that God does. We are not puppets to some script that God has written who knows when and that we just have to live through. Quite frankly, if that's how God worked, and a lot of people believe that that's how God works, which is why a lot of people have trouble walking into some kind of faith community. Frankly, if that is how God works, I'm going to be the first in line to say, I'm an atheist. God does not create these things. God comforts us. God sits with us. The, the Psalm, Psalm 23, gives us the answer. Where is God? The answer is right here. How do you live in a dangerous and unpredictable and frightening wor world? You open yourself up to the reality that none of us are alone. That whatever it is that we face, God is with us. Now, it is true it's true for me at times. I'm sure it's true for you at times. It's true for many people that when they are in the midst of a tragedy, um, when they're facing some kind of hardship, sometimes it is very difficult because they get stuck in that valley of the shadows. You know, they can't seem to find their way out. But that, my friends, is where God shines. It is in those dark places that God does his best work. It's in those dark places where God's role is not to explain to you why your child died or rationalize for you, you know, why you, you lost everything in a fire. God's role is not to give us answers as to why did this happen. It did happen. God's role is to lead us out from that dark place 
and into the light. That's God's role. God doesn't want us to get stuck in the valley of death. God wants us to live in light. No matter what is happening to us or around us, we can still experience joy. I shared with you the book from the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu about experiencing joy even in the most horrific times. The way I, I like to think about it is living in the light even when darkness is all around us. I want to tell you because this is something I am certain of. In this crazy, in this unpredictable, in this frightening world that we are in the midst of, goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the arms of the Lord forever. That is God.